So um, that also gives you a sense of how our presentation will go. There'll be a lot more music than uh, talking. <laughs> Neither of us love to talk. <laughs> We'd much rather be playing music. Um, but, uh, but we do have, uh, we have a few slides and explanation of things um, in between uh, playing music. And uh, you can see we've got a kachapi here, suling. Um, at some point, once we're done playing this, we'll be able to move it out of the way, and then you might be able to see the suling better. Uh, we also have, um, uh, we were really fortunate at the last minute, uh, we invited um, our friends from Bandung. So uh, we have a vocalist with us, Hendra Wati uh, Ashworth, and her husband Matt, who's going to play Kachapi too. So we're hoping that that will work. Um, and there they are on the screen, but we've got a few things before uh, before that that live um, playing happens. Um, did you want did you want to show scales now or wait until? Okay, I can I can show yeah. the scales. I, I have I have a bunch of swing here. This one is usually for the uh, for tembang sunda and kacapi suli. Right, uh, this one is uh, uh, the scale is a pelo degung or pelo degung. Okay, this this one is uh, that's it. Now is uh, in Bandung use this one a lot. This one is called, uh, I call kobongan. Kobongan is, uh, or in uh, school is called pipanlu. So different, uh, different on, what you, 
T or whatever it is, something like that. Also, this this one is. Uh, I make this one. It's uh, called uh, called Mandaluman. Mandaluman. Little bit uh, shorter, but the same, same. Uh, the same, same uh, do. Let's let say do. With with uh, the other one. It's like slender. Let's say like uh, what for um, Jawa, Pelog Jawa. The Sundan is called Pelog Jawa. Actually, it's called Mandalungan in Sunda. This one, this one is. A, I like, I like this one. I play this one. You have to have the uh, uh, pearl of the boom or madenda, or madenda, sorog, madenda, and slender too. This one pearl. This one madenda. That's modern. Now as uh, uh, Salenro, because well, Salenro is not of course it's not like a Japanese Salenro. But uh, is uh, usually for tembang uh, use rebab. Yeah. All right. So there was the introduction to uh, the uh, scales on the sule, and um, got, got my notes here. So we're gonna go and do uh, just a couple slides, and then we'll have some. Uh, live music after that. So this is the only, it's kind of awkward. This is the only room we had in the house that, we live downtown, it's kind of noisy. So this is, uh, this is our quiet room, <laughs> but uh, it's somewhat a little awkward. So, um, so the Suling uh, is featured in three ensembles that we're gonna uh, talk about tonight. And the, um, this is just a picture of those, the instruments in those ensembles. So you have a gamelan de gung in the background, and there are two, uh, two kachapi playing along with Borhan. And the musicians there are featured on a lot of the music samples that we'll play. So that's Rukruk, Ruk, Rukmana on the larger kachapi indung. And uh, Dede Suparman on Kachapi Rinshik. So we'll first talk about uh, Suling's role in Tembang Sunda. And, you know, Bur Burhan mentioned Tembang Sunda. It's um, stylized sung poetry accompanied by two Kachapi and Suling. Uh, the photo here is from a recent Tembang Sunda vocal competition and these competitions happen pretty regularly and you know there's usually about 40 singers or so on average competing sometimes more sometimes less um, in Tambang Sunda the Suling plays ornaments that match the vocal ornaments 
especially for tembon pieces. There's limited room for improvisation on the vocal melody, except during um, the instrumental interlude. So the suling often cues the vocalist at the beginning of phrases and then sort of ornaments around the melody. Uh, pieces are performed together in suites with one to two tembang pieces, which are the poetry sung in free rhythm, followed by a penambi, which is sung to metered accompaniment. So we're going to uh, perform three pieces now, Papa Tet, Rondagon, for Pongan, the first two are tembang pieces, and then it's followed by a penambi. So Borhan will do the tembang, and Kachapi, I'll do Suling. Then once we're done, I need the yeah. <laughs> uh, we want to do. Uh, we also have our guests from Indonesia, and so after we perform, then we are going to try and do a live, you know, with Borhan playing Suling and the musicians from Indonesia. Um, we're not sure how, you know, if, how well that will sync up on Zoom. So we also wanted to do something uh, that was live. So I will. Uh, move things back to uh, stop uh, sharing this. Okay, are we back? Yep, we're back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so um, <laughs> where are we at now? <laughs> uh, so I think what we're going to do now is bring uh, Andrew Wati and Matt from Bandung. Um, if we can uh, get uh, get them on the screen and. Uh, that last uh, suite that we pay, played was in Pelog and um, uh, I think uh, Warhan, Hendra, and Matt are going to play the Tembang song Kentar Chisa, which is in Sorok, and then um, with the Panambi King Kilaban. But okay, I think I'm first thing, my, there you go. I want to uh, move this. <laughs> We're gonna move this kachapi too, just so it's like since we're done playing it. Okay. 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 Man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I hope this is good. So this is like fingers crossed, cause uh, you know we're a little distance away, and uh, we'll see. But definitely Matt and Hendra will be matched up together, and. Uh, <laughs> so do you want me to play a kachapi for the tumbang as well? Sure. Okay, just add. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Are you good? So we'll just, I think if, I mean, if we just play and. Um, what do you play? Oh, uh, 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. I, I, I'll follow with my hand. Okay, okay. Yeah. And again, thank you guys. And I know it's really early there. <laughs> So, uh, not, not normally 6.30 a.m. isn't usually Pembang time, but... <laughs> not unless it's been a very long night. Can you hear the kachapi? Thank you. 
That sounds amazing. Thank you. Luar biasa. Hello, Pak Burhan Rian. Hello. It's very nice to you. Oh my God, make me goosebump. I would like to introduce Professor En, Director from Institute of Seni Budaya Indonesia in Bandung, Prof En. We have very amazing, talented artists. So we our Sundanese cultural arts and music. Thank you, Prof Poppy. I'm I'm sorry I can't open my video because I'm preparing my. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Your question is very honorable for us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So the director of ISB is a great supporter for supporting the Indonesian art, particularly from Sundanis. I'm a Sundanis. I'm a Sundanis also. We are very proud to hear you. Your performance is really great. Prof. En, thank you for coming. Okay, you're welcome. Great to all the participants. Hi, hey, who's Gina, Prof. Sumarsan, Matt Andrew. Hi, how are you? Look, thanks for the for the program, Bu Poppy. You're welcome, Pak Matt. Yeah. All right. Um, should we, Matt, move along? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after, we're just going to do one, one, one more slide music clip, and then uh, we'll have some questions. And then, I mean, we have other let's, slides, but, you know, there's kind of a break for a Let's afford the boom. I'm going to do No, we're not to do boom. No, not no, yet. Oh, okay, okay, the boom's at the end. Right. right. <laughs> we have our <laughs> <laughs> you, you mess up my slides. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, share screen. Okay, so um, at the beginning, one of the uh, scales that Rohan showed was uh, Mandalungan, which is um, uh, relatively new that this has been introduced to Tembang Sunda. Um, the, uh, the music clip that we're going to play is from the first Tembang Sunda Mandalungan recording, at least that I'm aware of, um, that was done in 1986 at Jibala Recording Studios. And it's still probably the most popular Mandalungan recording in West Java. The singer is the late Uyz Kamaria, who uh, set the standard for Sundanese vocalists starting in the 1970s, really until now. And I believe that uh, Hendra Wadat Wathi uh, studied with uh, Ibu Uyz at, at some point. Um, the Kachavi players on the recording are Ruf Ruf Rufmana and the late Ade Suwandi. Um, they joined Borhan on the recording. And so today, uh, 34 years after the recording was made, you can still hear vocalists and instrumentalists performing the songs on the recording note for note as recorded. So this clip is dubbed from a 1986 cassette, so uh, please. Forgive the sound quality, but the playing is uh, so beautiful that we really wanted to um, play it for all of you.
the chat so I don't know if there are any questions that anybody has any Tamang Sunda questions before we move on to uh, the next ensemble anything Matt um, we didn't have anybody asking questions but we didn't ask for them either so okay. let's does any if anybody has any questions um, feel free to put your name in the chat box now anything about maybe you've seen so far or any soothing questions and we can ask them. Just put your name in the chat box and we'll call on you. Richard has a question right away. Why don't you jump in, Richard? <laughs> Richard, are you there? Oh. He asked here um, if he's not jumping in with video. Um, could you mention a little about history of Kachapi? Yeah. Yeah. The history of Kachapi. It's, it's, uh, now, in here, I don't know about the uh, history, but I'm his, not a historian, I'm a player. 
<laughs> maybe maybe Henry can. I know he did yeah. kind of have. Uh, Henry, Henry yeah. was like our on-call ethnomusicologist yeah, on, for the day one, to uh, answer any of those kind of questions. So, uh, did you have anything, Henry? Um, I'm not sure Richard wants to hear my answer to that question. <laughs> um, we, he and I have probably talked about this before. Basically, it's a it's a elaborated version of, of an instrument that used to be used to accompany Hantun uh, narrative stories. So a solo singer who would tell a story about uh, the, the long gone Sunni's kingdom accompanying himself with a kachapi. And in the 19th century, the, um, the regent of um, Xi'anjur try, uh, started to make this a really classy thing that people would do in, you know, at evenings. Uh, so they hired musicians to come in and play the kachapi while the aristocrats themselves sang timbang songs as well as songs based on these pantun stories. And I have a theory, I don't know if it's true, but the reason that it's big and black like that is because the, the regent was trying to imitate the grand pianos of European salons. But mm -hmm. I have no evidence of that. It just <laughs> it always reminded me of the grand piano. That's a nice theory, Henry. Anyway, yeah. hope that's <laughs> enough. All right. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> All right, we have a, a question from Andrew Timar. You want to jump in, Andrew, with your question? Thanks, Matt. Hi, Rayan. Hi, Babud Han. Hey. <laughs> Always great to hear you guys playing. I have a question about Suling. Uh, these days, it seems uh, that uh, younger generation Suling players uh, carry or consider uh, their instrumenta instrumentarium, their standard set of instruments, of four types of suling, four lengths of suling, four types of suling. Uh, and and you, uh, Paburan, you showed some of these already, the uh, suling tembang, the suling mandalungan, which is slightly smaller, uh, the, the suling wisaya and, wisaya, and the, uh, the suling dugung, which I, I guess we're going to hear next. Um, when did that start to become a kind of a, a standard set, Paburhan? I don't know, it started from the uh, kind of like the, um, uh, what's it, when I was still in, in Bandung, right? And I think for, for uh, Mandalungan, it start from that Luis uh, Comaria uh, and the cassette. Start that and there. So that would be about yeah, about yeah, yeah, but in that, in that yeah. long time. Okay. And uh, the other one is Kobongan, it's, it's almost the same, same as that one, but uh, uh, different musicians. Uh, at the time, Panano, uh, what him create, uh, what him uh, song, which came from the like uh, from the Jap Japan, like they have a song you use Kobongan, Suling. Interesting. Uh, yes, uh, Panano studied in Japan and I think he, he found some affiliations with uh, between uh, one of the scales, one of the two, one of the scales used there and, and uh, Sorok, La uh, Sorok Medenda. Uh, I, I was, it's interesting, of course, uh, uh, those of you who might be not familiar with the, the, the cassette we just heard, uh, it was Pa Burhan who was playing that. Uh, so uh, you were playing the Mandalungan, Pa. Uh, this was the 1970s, is that correct? No, 1986. 86, so I'm right. Yeah, he actually yeah. recorded it right before he went to uh, teach at University of Washington, like a couple weeks before that. It was in, in that in that recording, though, you're playing uh, two sulings, right? Right, right, right. So the lower one, what do you call that? Suling bass, or? No, actually, the lower one is the this suling, ah. the regular suling. Regular suling. Ah. This, uh, because here this they have uh, um, mandalungan, but uh, you have to think about the uh, fingering. That one. 
So that's the standard kumbang that you're playing. Yeah. And the mandalungan is uh, fourth higher, I believe. And that's a separate instrument that you play. When, when, when you enter the high note, that's mandalungan. <laughs> it's the same, the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah, let's uh, call, call, yeah, pelok jawar, whatever, mandalungan is ah. Sunda. Nice. So in, in that recording, are you using the same instrument for both effects, or are you actually switching to mandalungan? Suli. Well, they're both mandalungan. Both mandalungan. He's playing both of them mandalungan. I understand. But there is a solo yeah, and the lower. I, I switch for, for, for the lower. Yeah. But for the, uh, the high tone, is, uh, um, I mid uh, the other suiting the shorter than this one. Right, right, yeah. right. So it's uh, sort of uh, 45 centimeters long. Right. This one is 60. So yeah, that's a fourth yeah. higher. So uh, it, is that your innovation, Paburhan, the Suling Mandalungan, the standalone instrument? Or is, w did you already, was that already played by Suling players? I did that one, actually. I, you I, did I, that? <laughs> wow, OK. That's very interesting. So this idea of the four, a set of four sulings is, is really a new thing. Yes, yes. I, thank now, you. Now it's really hard to find a suling like this. Ah. Because uh, you put, uh, now is uh, everything put in here, another hole for Kokoma. Yes. But uh, I never heard about uh, in Tembang Kobongan. Ah. Tong. Too many, <laughs> too many also. Just use for one, one note, for example. Only right. Just not, not, not very, not very, what is it? Not very uh, common. So, for example, this one is kobongan, but the high tone. Yes. Kobongan. That's kobongan. Okay, so in the, the With the hole? Yeah. That's a high tone, but for the low tone, this one. Uh. We just we need the just low tone. Yes. The the lowest octave. Yes. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. Right. Uh, I uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you told me when I studied with you that uh, that song was written for that album. Is that correct? I think all the songs yes, yeah. were written for that yeah, album. For ah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So just uh, our listeners might be interested in that. These were uh, fresh songs that were written for that album in, in 86. Yeah. Uh, and so and not only top, was it a kind... Uh, the top writers and... Composers, Kutemba and Sunda, that, that uh, Gugum hired to write for the recording. Right, for his wife, for uh, Ibuis. And, and not only that, so you, you actually created a new instrument to play that song. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Um, do you want to take one more question before moving on? There's, I think there's one more here. Sure, one more. Okay. Um, Ron Scudder, if you want to jump on, Ron. There we go. Uh, yes, I had a couple of questions. They were more technical about the suling itself. I've never actually held one or seen one close up. First of all, hello, Papa Ron and Ray. It's great to, great to see you again. Um, what is the, the mouthpiece looks very interesting, and I don't understand at all how the mouthpiece you works. Yeah, belong to Yeah, uh, Oh, I see. So it's, it's, it's wrapped, there's a slot and it's wrapped with the bamboo. Is that exactly yeah. it? Or? Yeah, with the notch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Is it a single piece of bamboo or is it multiple segments? Uh, it's uh, rotten. Rotten? Oh, rattan, rattan, rattan. Yeah, yeah, so it's not, is, is the instrument itself bamboo or yeah. also rattan? No, bamboo. 
this bamboo. Oh, this one, this one, and this one, bamboo. What's the different, different bamboo? <laughs> is that is that one huge long segment, or is that uh, drilled out? No, it's one. Just one. One segment. Yes, one. What? So it's a very special bamboo with the long segment mm -hmm. done like that. And and the last part is how do you tell exactly where to drill the holes for a particular tuning? The <laughs> maybe I'm th I wonder yeah. if maybe you should answer that like offline later, Ron. Yeah, right. that might sure. be kind of cool no right. if you really <laughs> talk about how to make the suling. We have to make the suling this and we have to yeah. divide this one, divide Yeah, there's divide a lot of five, measurements five, that go on. Okay, no problem. That sounds fine. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Divide five. Uh, sure, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ron. All right. Um, if you'd like to take over again, uh, Paburhan and Rayanne. Um, so I'm going to share and uh, talk a little bit about uh, Kachapi Suling Instrumental Ensemble. So um, this is really the instrumentalist ensemble and consists of two Kachapi and Suling or it's Tenbong Sundo without the vocalist. So the cassette uh, recording industry really helped establish and bring notoriety to the ensemble. The Suling plays an improvised melody, either loosely based on pre-composed songs or a skeletal pitch structure. And the repertoire and recordings emphasize improvisation and Suling virtuosity. Like the previous Mandalungan recording, uh, this Kachapi Suling Landangan cassette, where you see the cover here, was recorded in it was recorded in 1979 and was the most popular and remains the recording that uh, is most copied by Suling players. So one criteria for a Suling player is his or her ability to use notes outside of the fixed tuning in a comfortable and emotionally expressive manner. So the next music clip um, from Landangan is the improvised piece Walla Sari and it displays some of this. <laughs> Thank you. 
show some like swimming and improvisation kind of runs on swimming. Oh. Some one or two. Some sampling, yeah. Where I was going to show some sample, uh, just kind of some of the phrases and things that you might use in uh, Kachapi Sulain. Huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is it, uh, what? The sample, the sample that is on. Uh, this, for, uh, for example, in uh, I'm going to. So that's to, 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 let's say, to, uh, to Kenongan, called Kenongan, or to pitch, two pitches. This, uh, this one and this, this one. So we have uh, one more slide for Kachapi Sulain. <laughs> what, the picture of you? <laughs> so, um, where are we at? So this is um, the Kachapi Suling recording Banda Manusa, which was recorded last fall and released in the beginning of 2020. So um, the uh, photo, I think Warren was laughing, that's from the studio with him and uh, Rook Rook, uh, Rook Mana on Kachapi, and uh, uh, Dede Suparman is on Rinchik. Um, and the goal of this recording, in addition to releasing some nice music, was to uh, create some ongoing income for master musicians. All proceeds go to the Kachapi musicians on the recording, as uh, recording income for musicians of traditional music has really dried up in Bandu. Um, you know, during the days of the cassettes, um, there was quite a lot of income that musicians could make from all those recordings, but. Um, that uh, no longer exists. So it was also an uh, opportunity to reuni- reunite master musicians and document their playing and uh, continue to add to the body of Kachapi Suling recordings. So um, there's a short music sample um, uh, from the recording, and uh, I think then that's probably about it for Kachapi Suling, and then we'll move on to the Gong.
All right. Um, so before, uh, I guess before we move on to the gung, are there any like quick questions about Chapi Suling or did, uh, were questions answered previously? Any uh, Kachapi Suling questions? Anybody? No, we'll, we'll move on. People love that album. Where can we, here's a question, where can people uh, get that album? Oh, um, uh, Pusaka Suna's website, and I have that on the last slide, um, the link to the website. Cool. And then it's also like, you know, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, all those kind of places. It's everywhere. Great. All right. Do you want to show Dugu? You've been yeah. dying to show Dugu. <laughs> This is, I don't know why it's called Suling the Gung. Maybe because basically, or regularly, just for uh, it com accompany the Gamran the Gung. And also, uh, 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 <coughs> the, the tone is uh, higher, I think, uh, to make uh, match with the uh, Gamran the Gung. Holes only, only four the, exactly uh, 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 pentatonic. The goo. Could hear that um, you know Borham was able to get a few uh, notes outside of the scale even with this uh, four four hold suling. Yeah. Four <laughs> suling that's so, something more which than involved that. like you Five. know the small yeah. finger in the bottom of the hole and um, all kinds of little tricks to uh, to add to uh, add to the scale. Okay, I'm going to go back and share the screen again. And we'll talk a little bit about Dugong. So, uh, Dugong is uh, unique to Sunda, and the standard instrumentation since the 1920s has a minimum of six to seven instruments. Some sets include extra instruments. Uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, Orhan and I founded the Gamelan Dugung group Pusaka Sunda in 1988. Um, our set of instruments made by uh, Pat Pentram in solo um, has 11 instruments, which is more than, more than most Dugungs. But, uh, you know, this allows us to have more players. It allows us to have uh, a little more depth in the music, um, uh, you know, Orhan can compose for some different instruments. Uh, this is the this is a picture of a set similar to Argonlan. It's actually not Argonlan. Uh, we didn't have a really good picture of Argonlan. 
Uh, this set was used for a recent West Java group tour uh, of Kusarka Sunda, and it's owned by uh, Andy Bouchard and Rina Usman of Bandung. So the suling is prominent in most Dagoon repertoire. For classical Dagoon pieces, the suling follows the melody without too much room for improvisation, although I think, you know, there are still certain styles that uh, individual suling players have that are unique. Um, pieces with a skeletal pitch structure allow for much of the same level of suling improvisation that you would hear in Kachapi suling music. And many of the Panambi pieces that are performed in Tembang Sunda can also be performed on Dagoon, accompanied by a vocalist or chorus. So I haven't included any vocal Dagoon music tonight. Um, you can hear one piece in Henry Spiller's presentation that he did a couple months ago as part of this series. He has a really nice uh, vocal Dagoon piece. Um, so this uh, music sample is of a classic Dagoon piece titled Cellar Dagoon, and it's uh, from Kusaka Sunda's recording Samagaha. presentation. Uh, this is our last slide here and I don't think there's any more uh, suling demonstrations or uh, playing that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so anyways our contact information is there. 
Um, if you really want to get a hold of us, you know, Borheim doesn't really check his email regularly, so if you need something, uh, feel free to just contact me. And our website has a lot of information. Um, and uh, I thought this was kind of a nice photo here, which is of uh, Borheim with a suling maker in Bandu. So you can kind of see his, uh, his uh, sulings um, laying down there. He usually does it all kind of at, at ground level. Um, and I do have one final clip, which is, um, is also a Dagoon clip that, uh, is, uh, the music piece is Sengot, which is a fixed meter piece that allows for, as Henrik Stiller writes in the CD program notes, Rhapsodic Improvisations by Borhan on the Suling. Um, for this piece, Borhan uses a six-hold Suling. Uh, tuned to the dugong uh, instead of this short four hole and this suling allows him to play in soro tuning and gives more creative flexibility. So I believe the last clip, the last music clip uh, might be a little long so I can cut it off and then uh, or you know or you can take a break and then if anybody has any questions uh, we'll be available. So this is a live recording and, uh, you know, one of the, the reasons, you know, we, we put out this live recording is that the uh, Suling playing is just so good in a live recording, I think, you know, without all the stress of being in the studio. So this, um, this definitely shows it. So here we go on a single. <laughs>
questions that's kind of it for us but I did before I forget I think at the beginning I, I really forgot to thank Matt and uh, you know this uh, this has been just great Matt this whole series that you put on and I know how much work it is to put on events and uh, it's just you know it's it's a real pleasure to uh, participate as a listener and then to you know also participate as a presenter thank you so much it's been it's been a pleasure of mine. There are a few questions, and we have the first from R three. Yeah, hi. Um, can you hear me? Am I there? Yep. Good. Um, name's actually Randy Rainwish. R three is just so I can be hidden most of the time. Um, in the performance, the solo performance of the uh, Four Hold Suling. Um, we heard a number of, of notes that were outside of the pentatonic scale. And in the, the last piece, again, we heard um, uh, almost a diatonic voicing. Um, and uh, I'm wondering how much, uh, um, how much of the pentatonic scale in, in, hist in history, how much of the pentatonic scale was adhered to, how many notes were outside of it, or how common was it to stretch that pentatonic scale into other notes? And then how much in the last, uh, you know, 50 years has, uh, have other notes crept into the music? I think uh, about uh, at least nine. Nine what? Nine notes. notes. Oh, nine notes outside of the scale. Yeah. Yeah. Nine notes. Okay. Is this, is this recent or has this uh, always been the case? I've said that always. Always. Oh, that's not, not always. Not always. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, depend on depend on the work. Uh, uh, depend on uh, the structure from the structure. Or, is this new, or is it through history has this been the case? It's not very new. It's not very new. Ah, it's good. My, my teacher the same thing. And right. Right, right. It's very interesting. I, I, I'm more uh, cognizant of, of Chinese and Thai music. Chinese music, um, there are two notes that are commonly moved outside, uh, depending on the, on the culture and the, and the music. But to have so many outside of pentatonic scale is quite intriguing and so long. So, and it's beautiful. Thank you very much for your playing, especially on the, on the four hole suling. It was wonderful to get all those extra tones. Good. Thank you for that great question. Uh, Richard North has a question now. I see he's and Felicia are here. So do you want to jump on? Here we go. Richard. 
Sorry, I always have trouble with unmuting. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't know if e either you, Pap Borhan or Rian, know anything about this. It may be not part of your specialty, but you know, I studied classic um, the Gung in Bandung in the 70s. But in the late 70s and 80s, I went to the Pangadanga Sanalun Museum in Sumedang. And I heard a really old set, supposedly from the 1700s, played a gong. It was totally unlike the music from Bandung. It felt, I don't know how to describe it. I, I said in my question, it felt somehow ancient and ceremonial, but that doesn't really tell you anything. But I just wonder if you know anything about that music. Where did it come from? Is it still around? And it, it didn't seem to share anything with the Bandung style. But it was called a uh, dugong. They called it dugong. The name of the ensemble is dugong pangasi. I think it was from 1708. It was a really old set in the museum there. I think uh, uh, sometimes it depends uh, on the area, right? Uh, because the dugong in here is Latin from Chianyur. The, the song of the dugong. From from Cianjur, uh, Cianjur area is from in Bandung. Maybe Sumedang is close to close to Cirebon. Mungkin the maybe just just uh, they have kind of like diff different rates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pat. It was very interesting. I have a recording of it if you're ever interested. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 Send it to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in unless I unless I missed somebody in the chat box. If I did, please uh, let yourself be known. Well, it looks like there was like a lot of quite a lot of chat going on. A lot of chatting. Yeah, I liked Ray's. Uh, Ray had a really great comment. Um, the the last piece that you just played the uh, the example as he said. Uh, this is the piece where the Pusaka Sunda Gamon players get mesmerized by the suling uh, that they lose track of where they are in the song. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's from one of the people in our group who I can see that in the chat. And that's so true. And, and yeah, because I, I play Bonong on that piece, and it is so hard to not get lost when you're focusing on what the suling is. Absolutely. It's a trance, trance-like state. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. someone. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Um, oh, hello. Yeah. Oh. Can Pachaya. I, yeah. Can I make some question to Pak Burhan? Absolutely. Hello, uh, I'm Jaya from Washington, D.C. Uh, actually, we are from Rumpun Wargi Pasundat and we demonstrate in uh, Washington, D.C. And very amazing, <laughs> you guys play like that. Uh -huh. And then this come from a different place, right? One in, in Indonesia and you in California. Right. And a lot of audience I saw also from Australia. Wow. <laughs> but the other thing uh, in here, we are here in Washington, D.C. We're looking we try to to what uh, to uh, uh, make more people know or play the the Sundanese music, mm -hmm. but we also have a problem with the the in, uh, instructor. So maybe Pak Burhan will be help us to to teach our people right like here in Washington D.C. Maybe we do with Zoom or something. Mm -hmm. And I think Pak Burhan can play many instruments, right? Not just only suling, kecapi. And I saw uh, Miss Anne also introduce some like gamelan or something like yeah, that. Gamelan, but uh, uh, special the gong for me. Okay. Gung, gamelan, gamelan, gung. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you do you have gamelan in DC? Gamelan the gong. We have gamelan the gong. The instruments? No yet, but we bring it. <laughs> we we in in the in the process to make a complete the instrument. Mm -hmm. That's why we right now also we make some. Who is it? With with uh, Bu Eem, the from Bandung. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you know, 
we try to to make their complete what uh, instrument uh, Sundan is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the coming, I think like a next month, I think in shipping right now, we, we got a kachapi. So our people are here like to get some, you know, some lecture about the, the kachapi. So maybe Pak Burhan will be help us to do that. And later on, we do with the email or something. Kachapi. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, just send an email and with your contact information. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's it for me. Yeah. Maybe somebody else. Thank you, Pajaya. Um, yeah. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? Well, then, in that case, I would like to say thank you so much for uh, doing this lecture, Pa Burhan, Ray Ann, it's been absolutely wonderful performance slash lecture. Yeah, one of the best in the series so far, I think.